What is going on guys? We are back playing some more Surviving with Draconic Evolution. Uh, today guys, we are going to be discussing the Celestial Manipulator, which is one of the coolest blocks that Draconic Evolution offers, but it's really often overlooked. Now, most people come to Draconic Evolution mainly for the power storage, maybe a little bit for the armor and weaponry, uh, but when you look at Draconic Evolution, you probably think mostly of what you're seeing right here, the power storage, which is amazing, but a lot of people don't know that it offers a single block, which is the Celestial Manipulator, that allows you to control the time and weather in your world with extreme ease. So basically, we're going to be going over today how to automate it so your world will never have rain anymore, and it will always be daytime. Now, it's really nice if you're just playing in a world that it's never nighttime, you never have to worry about killing stuff, but for my world here, it's especially useful because I have a mob spawner and I have not lit up everywhere in my world where guys can spawn when I'm in my base so having it be nighttime decreases the spawn rates a ton and along with that if you have ever seen my processing area for my mechanism reactor which of course is right below us right now it is powered by solar panels so unfortunately when it becomes nighttime if I don't have a backup of power for over there I'm going to be totally out of luck and I am no longer going to be getting the stuff I need to run this reactor and then it could completely shut off. So there are a lot of reasons why you might want it to be daytime in your world and not be raining that aren't just because it's kind of annoying when it's nighttime and you have to fight stuff and that rain is a little bit loud. So I think this is an extremely effective block to have to use in your world and it's really easy to set up. Now, one downside, as you can probably see right here, is it is extremely expensive. So we've got two different blocks here. We've got two of each of them, and they are pretty annoying to come by. So we've got two nether stars, and we've got two dragon eggs. Now, today I'm going to be making two celestial manipulators, one to control rain with redstone, and one to control the time with redstone. Uh, you don't necessarily need to do those, especially if you have other mods that you can combine, but with just Draconic Evolution, it is kind of difficult to switch between the two uh, with controlling rain and controlling weather. I don't even know if it's actually possible. I want to say no, but um, yeah, so we're going to be making two today. Luckily, Draconic Evolution offers the ability to get more dragon eggs by just resummoning the Ender Dragon. Now, there are different ways. I believe Vanilla Minecraft offers a way to resummon the Ender Dragon, but unfortunately, you don't get the dragon egg back when you do that. You do need to do the ritual, and I will be covering that probably in next episode, um, but I wanted to do this today just because it's pretty darn awesome. Um, but basically the ritual is not very expensive. You resummon the ender dragon. It has a slightly different texture and then you can kill it again, which is very easy once you have this new super OP armor. And as you might be able to see, I made myself a sword of the wyvern, which is a very, very good sword. It's got uh, 15 attack damage. Didn't even think to put like any upgrades and chance, anything like that on it. But uh, yeah, it was really easy to kill the ender dragon. We got the two eggs and now we are here. Of course, getting the nether stars was relatively easy with my current setup to kill uh, wither skeletons and then just have the grinder for the wither but now we are here it is still very expensive even though it is relatively easy to kill those things so obviously it is you know a very simple item but you know the people that made draconic evolution understand that it is very strong and so they had to make it kind of expensive but that's enough rambling from me so we're going to grab out these draconium ingots and the gold and the diamonds and we're going to be making some cores from this so I believe it's the draconium ingots around the outside. We'll be able to see in a second. Yep, so we need eight draconic cores. You need four per, and we're making two, of course. And then we are going to grab this out, put the nether stars in the center, make some nice wyvern cores. So here we go. Get those going. We got two wyvern cores. Of course, you need one per. And then you're going to grab out everything other than the dragonite is really cheap. You need two blocks of redstone per. You need one clock two draconium ingots, and two iron ingots. So because I'm a little bit lazy with this, we can just come in here and find the celestial manipulator right here and click that in there and boom, there we go. So it looks pretty darn awesome. Uh, I don't really know how the dragon egg gets incorporated in there. I guess it's because you're kind of controlling time and space, but uh, that's not super important. Now, we also have this stuff in the center, which is an energy pylon, and of course, you need glass for above that, because this does require power to actually function. It does require a fair bit at that, too. It's not just a little bit of power to actually control it. It will suck up a ton of power, so you got to be sure that you actually have enough power generation to maintain this whenever it needs to run. And then we're going to make a daylight sensor, which will be inverted, because... We want to know when it's nighttime. Now, you can obviously invert it with redstone, but you can also invert it very easily by just right-clicking on it. 
we need this redstone and then we're going to be making another draconic evolution block now this one i didn't mention at the beginning of the video because it's so unbelievably simple that there is no need to actually explain it there's no need for someone to look up a video on how it works it is the rain sensor and it does exactly what it says it does it senses when there is rain and it will emit a redstone signal and that's that and you can see it's extremely cheap bucket two redstone pressure plate and any three like stone slabs it could be you know it could just be the regular stone slabs it could be really any slab of that sort i don't know what you'd call that any any solid block slab i guess that's kind of stone uh it could be stone brick slabs I, I don't really know many other examples but yeah basically anything like that and you have a rain sensor very cheap very effective at what it does all it needs to have is a direct line of sight to the sky much like the daylight sensor and when it starts raining it'll emit a redstone signal so now we have all of this and we are going to go down right down here and we'll bang a hard left when we get down here into this new very tiny room now the reason i'm setting it up down here is because although it would be a lot easier to just set it up outside i want to use the energy pylon like this one right here which is giving energy to this setup uh, i want to pull energy out of this setup because i know a lot of people have had questions that they're having trouble pulling it out and it's probably because they have their energy pylon too far away it's basically 16 blocks as far as i know that you can have an energy pylon away it's not very far so unfortunately if we want to use that and not the mechanism quantum entanglo porter we have to make it pretty darn close to our storage system so we're going to be setting it up down here and we can take our two celestial manipulators one there one there now they do look pretty awesome pretty futuristic -y. uh i prefer the texture of this like over the energy infuser one which has a bunch of bat wings coming off of it and stuff I think this is really simple, very cool, um, and it, it does look futuristic-y, which fits the mod very well. So we have these here, now we can easily transfer power by just taking our, and I guess I can show you this first, if we click on it, you can see it can store up to 4 million RF, so if we take an energy pile on there, put down the glass, it now forms, and it should be going to, uh, where is it, it should be able to output now, so this should be outputting power. So if we take a look at this, it now has 4 million in each. It's giving power off to these, and it's hooked up, easily transferring it. I think there would be particle effects here if I didn't have them all turned off. But there we go. These can now actually function. Now, fair warning, they are a little bit loud when they function, but if we want to test one out right now, you can see that you have the ability to switch between weather and time. So you can stop rain, start rain, and start a storm. And then if you go to time, you can do sunrise, midday, sunset, moonrise, midnight, moonset, you can stop it or you could do skip a full 24 hours now also if you apply redstone signal to this it will continue skipping and skipping and skipping 24 hours until the redstone signal stops so uh obviously these are the manual controls right here so let's say that we wanted to i don't want to click start a storm but let's say we want to bring it to sunrise we click that and you get these cool cool particle effects they're going to float into the ceiling so we're not even going to be able to see them but you can kind of hear this vibrating noise uh, as it goes and if we were outside it doesn't just magically change it it actually imagine speeding up the cycle so if you're closer to that time it'll be a little bit faster if you just passed it and it needs to do essentially a full cycle it'll take a little bit longer it's a little bit fun to watch when you're outside but now it is finished we're back in here and it should be sunrise now so that's how you manually change it now we are going to talk about how we're going to automate these which is again very easy so we need to get rid of i think you how do you, I don't even know the controls to get rid of this, but let's just search up some random that. Uh, and now we can see the configure redstone control because unfortunately it is under our JEI or NEI. I think it's JEI, but uh, yeah, so configure redstone control. Very awesome. You click this and it gives you a ton of different options. Now it basically just has a picture for all the options where this one is going to be stop rain, this one is going to be start it, and when you select these different ones, when it gets a redstone signal, that is what it's going to do. Now, of course, you've got the full cycle or until redstone signal stops. So that's what I was saying before. If you automate it like this, it will keep going until the redstone signal stops. If it's before 24 hours, it'll only do 24 hours. If it's after the fact, it'll just keep going and going and going. So uh, you do want to be careful if you click on that and you just get yourself in an endless cycle of just burning through power. But we're going to set this one to stop rain. And we just got to remember that this one is the stopping rain one. And then this one, we're going to come over and we are going to do set to sunrise. 
and that basically means when it gets to a point where the inverted daylight sensor says it's nighttime which will basically be right when it becomes nighttime it will then revert it back to the beginning of the day and we'll be good to go we will always have power coming in from our solar panels and we will be all set and our mob spawner will have much better rates and we'll never have to worry about rain either which will be a lot less frequent but you also want to make sure you kind of take care of both and cover both of them i also just thinking about this i love how this armor looks it is so awesome but we're going to put this down just wire the rain sensor in there put this down wire the daylight sensor in there and then we have to mine up and bring ourselves to the surface now hopefully we don't run into anything uh but if we do i think we can just put some glass here so unfortunately i didn't move us over fast enough or far enough but we're gonna replace this so that we can fly and we are going to come up here and it looks what was that did i just take fall damage it sounds like i did uh we are going to go up and basically we just need to break our way up to the surface now i think glass should not interfere with this at all but we get up here and we now have a direct line of sight to the sky oh now it's changing it yeah so that works it's changing it because we haven't inverted it yet that is my mistake so now we're going to come back down here and come down to the rain sensor because this one again needs direct line of sight to the sky and we need to invert this and we need an empty hand and we just right click on it and there we go now this is an inverted daylight sensor if you don't know what this is it basically you just right click on a regular daylight sensor and it turns it to this and it becomes essentially what would be a a nighttime sensor i guess um it'd be I, you can't just say a day night it'd be a, a night light sensor uh but basically once it becomes nighttime and it is no longer you know seeing a sky that is giving off light for daytime it is going to emit a redstone signal basically just the opposite of a daylight sensor and you just want to use that because it makes it a little bit easier than having to actually go in and if you really for some reason for some weird weird reason wanted to use a daylight sensor without inverting it you could just use a redstone torch to invert the signal very easily um, but this basically does that for you and so now all we'd have to do is kind of fill in this area here so it does not look so disgusting i guess and have a straight shot to the ceiling uh where it can see out to the sky we should be able to put glass there but i'm gonna leave it like this for now because i don't actually think i have any glass on me uh but we can replace this because we don't need to fly anymore and i'll have to get rid of these blocks somewhere i'm running out of storage space upstairs unfortunately but i think that is going to be it for today guys now next episode i said that we are going to be doing the dragon ritual which will actually take a fair bit of time but i think this video is probably a little bit on the shorter side now a lot of you guys have been asking when i put out the surviving with batania videos to do more surviving with draconic evolution now the only problem is there really isn't a ton of content that this mod offers because a lot of the stuff is just repetitive things so we all know how to set up this uh power storage and all it would be is upgrading the tiers of power storage but we all know how to do that because it's just adding additional blocks to it in the same pattern as before so there really aren't more videos i can make on that so this is going to be a very short series so once we go over you know a couple more episodes there isn't a ton of content unless there's updates coming out that we can really cover so i know a lot of you guys really like this series and we will start a new series after this but that's just a heads up as to why the videos are not actually coming out as frequently as batania it's just because there's not as much content but hopefully you guys enjoyed the video if you found it entertaining or informative in any way please feel free to give it a like as it does help me out a lot and you know happy 2017 to you guys you may be watching this on january 2nd you might be watching this on march 30th i don't know i'm just picking a random date but either way happy 2017 to everyone hopefully you guys had a good new year's eve i just kind of sat at home my plans kind of fell through so was sitting at home didn't really didn't really do anything played some path of exile but uh let me know if you guys did anything fun for new year's eve in the comments what your new year's resolutions are and all of that and i will be sure to hold each and every one of you to them so we'll check back in a couple months see how everyone's doing but that's gonna be it for today guys and i will talk to you later